Muna's question. Every day I tell my daughter to offer prayer, but she does not listen to me. I tell her to offer prayer and make dua, but she ignores me. What should I do? How do I make her offer prayers? Again, this is one of the areas where Islam is totally clear on the stance of it. In the non-Muslim world, they would probably say it is their freedom, it is their right to choose whether they want to pray or not, this is up to them. There is no compulsion in religion. We must not order them to pray. If they don't want to pray, it's up to them. This is totally unaccepted. In Islam, this is totally unaccepted. The most important pillar after the Shahada is prayers. Establishing prayer is the essence of Islam. Without prayers, there is no Islam. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the pledge between us and them is prayer. Whoever abandons it is a kafir, a disbeliever. Whoever does not pray at all is a disbeliever. And those who pray on and off are hypocrites. The only part of the ritual, the only ritual of Islam that was mandated in the seventh heaven is prayer. Everything else, such as zakat, pilgrimage, fasting, was mandated on earth. The Prophet tells us, والسلام, instruct your children to pray when they are seven years of age and beat them when they are 10. Meaning if from seven till 10, there's no physical punishment. But if they reach the age of 10 and still they refuse to pray, we must beat them. I don't know how old your daughter is, but definitely if she is like 15 or 17, this is not the age of beating anymore. However, you must not compromise. You must not give in or surrender to her negligence. You have to draw the line. You want to save her from hellfire. Even if you force her, it's your duty. Even if she doesn't want to, it's your duty. Imagine to those Westerners and disbelievers who claim that people have the right to choose. Imagine if you see someone in America wanting to commit suicide. Would we say he has a right to choose? It's his free will? Of course not. This is a crime. And if he were to be caught, he would be taken to prison for killing, trying to kill himself. Euthanasia is a crime in most countries, which is killing yourself due to the pain that is intolerable. So you get the help and the assistance of a doctor to euthanize you. Merciful killing, they call it. It's a crime. So when a child says, I don't want to pray, we have to reprimand. When a man or a woman says, I don't want to pray, this is a betrayal of the religion. And this is grand treason to the community. And we have to correct this, even by force. It has to be corrected. So you have to look into your daughter's routine and lifestyle and start to introduce punitive measures in order to correct her. And generally speaking, your husband is the controller of such measures. 
He's the man of the house. He has to force his daughter. Or we will have to take punitive measures. No allowance, no mobile, no internet access, no uh, uh, permission to leave and, and see your, your friends until you establish your relationship with Allah. Because this is the last straw that would break the camel's back. The Prophet والسلام, said that between a man and kufr and blasphemy is prayer. So once a person leaves prayer, then he's not a Muslim anymore. So this is not something to be taken lightly. Like if she started smoking, for example. Yes, this is sinful. This is harmful, harmful for her health, but it's a sin. Unlike leaving prayer, this is really serious and it has to be taken seriously as well.